This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Today I want to look at a really nice three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. But not maybe the three-dimensional version that you're thinking of, which essentially still deals with the length between two points. What we'll look at is something involving not length, but area. So let's maybe see the setup here. So let's say we've got a right angled, um, not a cube, but like a rectangular box. And then in one of the corners, we look at some triangles. And those triangles, well, one of the edges or one of the vertices is on the corner. And then two of the other vertices are on attached sides. So let's look here. We've got this triangle AOB, which is on this side that's facing us. Whereas this triangle AOC is on the top. And then this triangle BOC is on this right side here. But if we build those three triangles, there's like kind of a bonus triangle that we're getting for free. And that's the triangle on the inside of the box, which is triangle ABC. And what this three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem known as Degua's theorem says is that the area of the triangle within the box squared, so the area of triangle ABC squared is equal to the area or the sum of the squares of the areas of the component triangles. So notice that's what we have here. Area of triangle AOB squared plus area of triangle AOC squared plus area of triangle BOC squared. Okay, so let's see how we might derive this fact. And this is like fairly elementary, but that being said, this is like a result that, you know, maybe I've heard of a long time ago, but I haven't thought of it in a long time. So I thought it would be nice to make a video about. Before we continue, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you ready to reimagine your online presence? Look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is a service that takes the hassle out of creating a website and will better represent you and your brand. Choose from a vast library of professionally designed templates that are not only visually stunning, but also fully customizable to reflect your unique style. The new Fluid Engine gives you complete control over the structure of your website. Squarespace's intuitive drag and drop builder allows you to create and edit your website effortlessly. No technical skills required. Every website you create with Squarespace is fully optimized for mobile, so your audience can enjoy your content on any device, anywhere, anytime. Use Squarespace's analytics to measure your website's performance and make informed decisions for growth. I use Squarespace for my website and find it easy to use with plenty of integrations. They even have a plugin for LaTeX. It allows me to include equations on my website very easily. Whether you need a place to sell your merch or show your art, Squarespace has the tools that you need to keep your website modern and easy to use. Give Squarespace a try today. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Michael Penn to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using code Michael Penn. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So let's first look at the triangles whose area is easy to calculate. And that is the triangles on the sides of the boxes or of the side of the box. And that's because they are all right triangles. So calculating their height, well, it just jumps right out at you. You don't have to do anything. So for example, the area of triangle AOB, well, so that's gonna be one half base times height, but we can take the base to be the length A to O, and we can take the height to be the length B to O. So area of triangle AOB is one half AO times BO. Similarly, the area of triangle AOC will be one half AO times OC. And then the area of the remaining triangle, triangle BOC, will be one half AO times the length BO. But that takes care of the right hand side of this proposed equation. Now we need the left hand side, which is 
a bit trickier because we don't have a right triangle anymore. So we'll have to use a pretty famous formula for calculating the area of a triangle based off the side length, and that's Heron's formula. And we're not gonna use the classical version of Heron's formula, we're gonna use an equivalent version that was found in a Chinese text in 1247. And that specialized to our setup looks like this. So area of triangle ABC is equal to one half times the square root of AB squared times AC squared, and then minus one quarter AB squared plus AC squared minus BC squared, and then all of that is squared. Okay, nice. But notice that means if we square this area, well, we get rid of the square root and we get a quarter out front instead of a half. That being said, before we write that down, let's note that by the Pythagorean theorem, we know the length of AB in terms of AO and BO, the length of AC in terms of AO and OC, and the length of BC in terms of BO and OC. That's because those are all right triangles. So the Pythagorean theorem will give us the following. So we have AB squared, is equal to AO squared plus BO squared. We have AC squared is equal to AO squared plus CO squared. And then we have BC squared is equal to BO squared plus CO squared. So we'll take each of these and put them inside of our formula that we have for the area of triangle ABC. So we'll replace AB squared with this thing that I have underlined in orange, but that appears two times up here. And then we'll replace AC squared with this stuff that I have underlined in green. So that also appears two places. And then this stuff involving BC squared only occurs one place, and that's gonna be right here at the end. Okay, so using all of these things, we can easily calculate this area of the triangle ABC squared in terms of maybe more useful pieces. So we'll have one quarter times, so it's a quarter because we're squaring it. Now the square root's gone. We'll have AB squared times AC squared, so let's see. That'll be AO squared plus BO squared times AO squared plus CO squared. And then we'll do minus one quarter times, let's see, we have AB squared. So that's gonna be AO squared plus BO squared. And then we'll have plus AC squared. So that's again, AO squared plus CO squared minus BC squared. So that'll be minus BO squared minus CO squared after distributing that through. But then all of this is within something squared, so we'll take care of that as well. But notice we get cancellation in that rightmost term. So observe that this BO squared cancels this BO squared because they have equal but opposite coefficients. Same thing with this CO squared and this CO squared. But then these two objects add up to, let's see, two times AO squared. Okay, nice. But then notice that that's in a something squared, so that's gonna give us four AO to the fourth power. Okay, so now let's go on to the next step. So we've still got this quarter out in front of the whole thing, and now if we distribute these two binomials into each other, we'll have AO to the fourth power, and then plus AO times CO, quantity squared, I'm factoring that square out, plus AO times BO, quantity squared, and then plus, finally, BO times CO, quantity squared, and then notice that we've got minus an AO to the fourth based off of this minus quarter times four AO to the fourth. 
But now observe that this bit cancels. And then we can take this one quarter and bring it inside. But if we bring it inside, well, we can extend these parentheses and write it as AO times C over two squared. That's because that two in the denominator will change to a four in the denominator after squaring. And we'll do these, that for all of these bits. But now let's look at what we have. This AO times CO over two squared is exactly the area of AOC. So here we have the area of triangle AOC quantity squared plus the area of triangle AOB quantity squared plus the area of finally triangle BOC quantity squared. But that's exactly where we wanted to end up. So you might say, well, is there an n-dimensional version of this? Well, in fact, there is. And what it has to do with is, well, let's talk about the four-dimensional version. If we had a four-dimensional box, and on one of the corners of the box, we put, um, let's see, I think it would be four tetrahedrons, and then sort of inside of that four-dimensional box, you would get this other bonus tetrahedron. Well, those tetrahedrons each have volumes, and the sum of the square of the volumes on the sides equals the square of the volume on the inside. And that's the four-dimensional case, but the same thing works for an n-dimensional case. But the approach to that, I think, is a little bit more difficult than what we want to do here. And that's a good place to stop.